Hi, I'm Steve Kosky, host of Papa Steve's Rebel 1100 Garage, where we show do-it-yourselfers how to maintain your motorcycle. Let's get greasy. This video started out to be about showing do-it-yourselfers how to install Honda's Rebel 1100 fairing. But I hit several snags during the installation. So instead, I recommend that do-it-yourselfers have somebody else install the fairing. Here's why. The Honda installation instructions too often are ambiguous or vague. The Honda windscreen fairing integrates solidly with the triple tree, but the integration also makes the fairing needlessly challenging to install. Some Rebel 1100 fairing torque specifications require tools that few do-it-yourselfers already have. If you decide to install the fairing yourself, this video will guide you with suggestions to make the process go more smoothly. Even though the name of this YouTube channel is Papa Steve's Rebel 1100 Garage, I don't claim to be a highly skilled motorcycle mechanic. I'm a do-it-yourselfer, like many of you. I've only owned a motorcycle for three years. I ordered my fairing last March. Honda delivered it in December. The most maddening aspect of installing the Rebel 1100 fairing is the inadequate instructions from Honda. I'm referring to the six-page document called Honda Screen Cowl Installation Instructions. The document is number 72MLA090. I sure hope there's a better set of instructions that I wasn't able to find. The most obvious problem with the installation instruction sheet is that it relies too heavily on visual communication and almost completely avoids process writing that could amplify and explain, step by step, in clear, concise language, what to do and how to do it. The most widely respected newspaper designer of the mid-20th century, Edmund C. Arnold, has a clever phrase that sums up the best visual communication. A picture plus 10 words is worth a thousand words. Honda's technical writers should tattoo Arnold's wise words on the back of both hands. Because Honda tech writers over rely on visual communication, the instructions are vague in places where they need to be precise and ambiguous in places where they need to be specific. Here's one example now, but I will point out others during the video as they become relevant. In step one from the installation sheet, these are the words accompanying two images illustrating what Rebel 1100 parts need to be removed before installing the fairing. Quote, refer to the service manual for the motorcycle, remove the motorcycle parts as shown, end quote. This imperative is followed by an icon of an open book in parentheses. In other words, Honda texts don't tell you in the instruction sheet what you will need to do to remove the part. Instead, they redirect you to information somewhere unspecified in an inch and a half thick CMX 1100L slash LD service manual. Seemingly, they have taken their lead from the World Wide Web and peppered the instruction sheet with broken hyperlinks. Their approach is lazy communication for two reasons. First, they assume you already have the manual to which they are referring. Maybe you have it, maybe you don't. Second, to make matters more difficult, they perversely decline to tell you where to look for the information you need in the 23-chapter, 484-page manual you may or may not have. One of the most important axioms of professional communication is, when you need to give your audience information, don't make them work to find it. If I were grading these installation instructions as a college student project, I would give them a D. The visual elements, the images, are crisp and detailed. However, too much of the necessary information being conveyed is lost because the instructions contain too few words. Now that I've given you a fair warning, let's start the installation. Here are the tools I use to install the Rebel 1100 Batwing fairing. Now you understand why my wife sometimes calls me Tool Man. You don't really need everything shown here. Here's an example. At the top left is my multi-tool with attached 3 8 inch ratchet drive. I used it because I have it. You can get by with a 3 8 inch ratchet wrench. 
At the bottom left are three sets of metric hex wrenches. The color-coded L wrenches are necessary because you need the short end. But you will need the short reach hex sockets next to them. Further to the right is a set of T-handle hex wrenches. They're nice, but the color-coded wrenches in the short reach hex set will suffice. To the right of those is a 3 8 inch extension and a universal joint. You'll need those. At the very end along the bottom row is a ratcheting driver. I found it very useful with a 5mm hex bit to snug down the windshield and screen cowl before torquing them. Below the multi-tool at the top left is a 3 8 inch torque wrench. You'll need it to torque the bolts attaching the screen cowl stay. Finally, to the right of the torque wrench is the newly acquired torque driver I bought from Amazon for this project. It's essential, unless you have another tool you can use to torque bolts and screws at 1 newton meter or less. 1 newton meter is 8.9 inch pounds. The Rebel 1100 windscreen and fairing has six major pieces that need to be attached to the motorcycle using several bags of supplied connectors. It would have been helpful if Honda had labeled the connector bags with identifiers that correspond to the numbers in the installation instructions. They didn't. Lazy. Still a D. So, I've labeled the numbers in red text in my video. Protect the motorcycle finish by draping a thick towel over the gas tank and covering at-risk parts with masking tape. Before you can attach the new pieces of the fairing, you need to remove selected items. Unscrew the two hex bolts holding the original meter visor. Notice the open book icon on page 3 of the instructions. The icon refers you to the service manual. Honda techs don't say where in the service manual to find the relevant information. So I added the chapter and page numbers to the illustration in my video. Next, unscrew the four hex screws from the headlight cover. Then remove the bracket holding the wiring harness and the wiring harness cover so you can temporarily move the wiring harness out of the way. Again, I added the chapter and page numbers where you can find the removal information in the service manual. Before you rush off to order the service manual, be aware that it doesn't help much. The wiring harness bracket is easy to remove, however the information in the service manual about how to remove the wiring harness cover is vague. I found another illustration at page 131, but no instructions about how to remove it. All I could achieve was unscrewing the screw holding the cover. I couldn't figure out how to remove the cover without breaking it, so I left it in place and just moved the cover and harness out of the way later when I needed to. Now you are ready to start installing pieces of the fairing. The first fairing part to install is the headlight cowl cover. The headlight cowl cover slips over the headlight, then is held in place with four 5 by 19 mm socket bolts. The 5 refers to the size of the hex wrench to use. The instructions say the four bolts need to be torqued to 1.0 Nm. For those of us do-it-yourselfers who don't speak metric, Nm stands for Newton meters. Your torque wrench probably has both metric and ASA calibrations but it doesn't go as low as 1.0 Nm. 1.0 Nm converts to 0.74 foot-pounds. But like mine, your click-style torque wrench is probably not accurate below 5, or even worse, 10 foot-pounds. A dental torque wrench might be accurate at 3 quarters of a foot-pound. I checked out the theory with my stepson-in-law, who's a periodontist. But that didn't pan out either. His torque tool maxes out at 0.4 newton meters, just a bit under half of the Honda specified torque. I would never ask to use his dental tool anyway. He wouldn't want to put it in a patient's mouth after I've used it to torque bolts on my motorcycle. But here is an intriguing irony. A $25 bar type torque wrench can measure torque continuously 
from zero to its maximum rated torque. Although I suspect that for most cheap bar style wrenches, achieving an accurate torque at one newton meters or 0.74 foot pounds probably is not realistic. One option might be the San Liang torque screwdriver. The San Liang is not a perfect solution though. It's calibrated in inch pounds and has a usable range from 10 to 70 inch pounds. The fairing instructions provide required torque settings in metric, so you need to make the conversion. Here's an image of the conversion chart I created. I'll add a copy of it to the text description of this video and note the values to use where they come up in the video. Another option is to ask your smartphone to convert the torque values for you. Here's how. On an iPhone, push and hold down the on-off button. Then say, hey Siri, how many inch pounds in one newton meters? The San Liang is an inexpensive torque screwdriver, $30 on Amazon. I ordered one after completing the installation, then torqued the reachable nuts after it arrived. The four hex bolts holding the headlight cowl cover need to be torqued to 9 inch pounds. The San Liang torque screwdriver is supposed to be accurate to 10 inch pounds. However, the adjustment mechanism is calibrated in 1 inch pound increments below 10 inch pounds, so you can set values below 10, but the documentation only claims accuracy from 10 to 70 inch pounds. The next step is to remove the two hex bolts securing the headlamp to the lower cross member of the triple tree. You'll need to use the short end of a 6mm hex wrench to get to it. Once you've broken the bolts loose, though, you may be able to unscrew them with your fingers. After you have removed the two hex bolts, insert the two metal collars into the recessed holes where the bolts were. Be careful not to drop the collars. The collars will eventually be held in place when you reinstall the replacement hex bolts. You might want to secure the collars temporarily with masking tape. Next, push the two mount rubbers into the existing mounts inside the upper triple tree cross member. Push the rubber mounts into place from the underside of the cross member. Once the mount rubbers are installed, they should stay put. If you haven't already done so, now is the time to move the right and left turn signals out of the way. They block access to the hex bolts securing the combination meter. Now remove the socket bolt securing the combination meter. Honda's visual instructions neglect to mention removing these bolts. It's an important sin of omission because you need to replace the stock socket bolts with the longer 6 by 55 millimeter socket bolts supplied with your fairing. The longer bolts secure the top of the screen cowl stay. You're ready to slip the screen cowl stay into position. Pull the headlight away from the triple tree enough to slip the stay in behind it. The two steel posts on the right and left side of the stay push up into the mount rubbers you placed in the upper triple tree cross member. Work the stay side to side until you can push it up into the mount rubbers as far as it will go. Line up the right and left screw holes on the bottom of the stay with the two collars you placed earlier. If you tape the collars in place, remove the tape first. When you have the bottom screw holes lined up with the holes in the two collars, insert the 8 by 40 millimeter socket bolts and start the threads.
Now you should be able to install the two 6x55 millimeter socket bolts that secure the top of the stay. Securing these bolts requires slipping them into the holes in the stay, sliding a metal collar over each bolt, then threading them into the holes from which you extracted the bolts securing the combination meter. After all four screws are started, you'll be able to tighten the top bolts with a 5 millimeter hex wrench. The bottom two screws are hard to get to with a hex wrench. For me, the best tool was an 8 millimeter hex socket attached to a universal joint at the end of a 3 8 inch ratchet extension. If you used a rounded hex wrench, be sure to use enough downforce to prevent the hex head from stripping the bolts. I used a non-rounded wrench to get a better bite. The bottom two bolts require different torque settings from the top two bolts. Use 12 newton meters for the top bolts and 22 newton meters for the bottom bolts. That's 9 foot-pounds and 16 foot-pounds respectively. These are the most important bolts securing the fairing to your Rebel 1100. Use the correct torque for them. You wouldn't want the fairing to come loose at 70 miles per hour, then home in like a heat-seeking missile on the soft flesh between your chin strap and your jacket collar. With the screen cowl stay torqued and secure, you're ready to install a replacement meter visor. The visor bolts into place with two 5 by 13 millimeter hex screws. These screws also need to be torqued down. Use 5.2 newton meters, about 4 foot pounds. I use my 3 8 inch drive click type torque wrench, even though it's only accurate down to 5 foot pounds. The two screws are 20% over torqued, but I didn't encounter any disasters. Put the parts you removed back together. Reattach the turn signals. Put the screw back in the wiring harness cover and reattach the wiring harness bracket. Honda Techs don't really tell you when to do this. They just show the turn signals reattached in the next illustration. That's D-worthy visual communication. By now you should feel pretty good about the progress you've made. Don't get overconfident yet. Honda Techs are ready to pitch you two more curveballs. The next step is to install the windscreen. The illustration looks straightforward. For each of 5 by 16 millimeter hex screws, 5 millimeter thrust washers, set washers, 5 millimeter well nuts, and 9 millimeter washers. All attach the windscreen to the screen cowl stay. Here is the first curveball. If you don't have experience with well nuts, the illustration looks wrong. Your vast personal experience tells you that the well nuts need to go through the stay from the motorcycle side. Taint so. A well nut works like the molly screws you use to hang stuff on plasterboard walls. You've done it. You drill a hole in the wall, push the molly screws through the hole, then they spread their wings and lock into the inside of the wall. Well nuts use the same principle as molly screws. Start by pushing the 9mm washers onto the well nuts. Then push each washer all the way to the flange at the end of its nut. Insert the well nut into the four keyholes in the screen cowl stay. Then slide the nuts up to fit securely into the top of the keyhole. Now you can assemble the screws with their two washers. The thrust washer slips onto the screw first, followed by the set washer. Now the Honda Techs have got you. Here's the next curveball. Which washer is the set washer, and which is the thrust washer? Words on paper would be useful here. Four of the washers are white nylon, and four of them are black rubber. Which is which? They look the same in the illustration. The bag they came in doesn't say. You can't refer to the service manual to find out. This is more D-worthy communication. Here's what I found out from my own research. Thrust washers function as a bearing, so you need the smooth, hard surface of the 5mm white nylon washers against the head of the hex screw while you tighten it. The softer black rubber washers don't need to turn against anything. They're designed to protect the acrylic windshield. So put the white washers on the hex screws first, followed by the black washers. 
Now you insert one of the screw assemblies through a top hole in the windscreen. Line it up with the well nut mounted in the cowl screen stay and partly thread it in. With the windscreen attached by one hex screw, line up the other top hole with its well nut and thread it in as well. Attaching the remaining two hex screws through the bottom holes will be easy. As you tighten the hex bolts, the rubber on the well nuts will spread out, locking behind the keyholes in the stay and securing the windshield. After all four hex screws are started, tighten them down, then torque them to 0.42 Nm, about 3.6 inch-pounds. Here's my disclaimer. I torqued the hex screws to 4 inch-pounds with my new San Liang torque screwdriver, but the San Liang may not be accurate below 10 inch-pounds. The final part is to install the Batwing. Honda calls it the screen cowl. Try not to drop the well nuts. The rubber makes them bounce funny and you can't hear them when they hit the ground. I had to replace two of mine with generic ones after the Honda well nuts fell out during assembly. Apparently the motorcycle snacked on them because I never found them. Now that you know about well nuts, installing the Batwing is straightforward. Install four well nuts, two on each side of the stay, as shown in the illustration. Remember, the well nut flanges point away from the headlight. Then install the remaining two well nuts in the mounts on the inside of the Batwing. The easiest way to install the Batwing is to attach the two well nuts on the inside of the Batwing first. Get one 5x16mm hex screw started. Use it to hold the bat wing in place while you line up the second hex screw. After these two screws are partly threaded, it will be easy to line up and thread the remaining four screws into their well nuts. After all six screws are started, snug them up, then torque them. One newton meter, or 0 0.74 foot-pounds, or 8.9 inch-pounds. I torque them to 9 inch-pounds with my San Liang torque screwdriver. Recommendations to Honda about how to improve the installation process. Don't assume the loyal Rebel 1100 do-it-yourselfer owns a service manual. When you refer the do-it-yourselfer to the service manual, don't be perverse. Tell him or her which chapter and page to look at. Amplify and clarify the marvelous step-by-step -step illustrations you provide with words. Make following your instructions foolproof. When installation instructions have clearly numbered parts, ship the parts in plastic bags that have corresponding numbers. When the assembly includes parts that don't have household names, like well nut, 5 mm thrust washer, and set washer, don't make do-it-yourselfers guess what those things are, how they work, or how to identify them. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
I'd be delighted if you would subscribe to Cruising with Papa Steve. If you don't, I'll be just another codger talking to himself on the internet.